Good afternoon and welcome once again to the uh, weekly updates with the mayor. Um, you know, it's just clearly you've all experienced this. You know, the past couple of days have been kind of soupy around here. Uh, you know, it looks like things have, are potentially on and off clearing a little bit, uh, but not 100 percent. Kyle, give us the seven day outlook. And then also, if you would, you know, talk to us about any other tropical depressions or, or hurricanes that we might be experiencing in the in the future. So today there is cloudy skies, a stray shower or storm is possible. I have 83. Tonight, rain weight, chance of rain, 90%, low 69. Tomorrow, thunder showers, I have 81. Chance of rain, 90%. Tomorrow night, partly cloudy, low 63. Friday, partly cloudy, I have 79. Friday night, mostly clear, low 51. Saturday, mostly sunny skies, I have 79. Saturday night, clear skies, low 55. Sunday, mostly sunny. I have 82, Sunday night, partly cloudy, low 61. Monday, partly cloudy, a stray shower or storm is possible. I have 81, Monday night, mostly clear, low 60. Tuesday, partly cloudy, I have 84. Tuesday night, partly cloudy, low 64. And next Wednesday, scattered storms, high of 83, and scattered storms will low of 58. So it look, it's looking like this weekend might shape up nicely, um, starting Friday and moving through the weekend, and then back to wet and heat. So, Kyle, I know that you're tracking all things tropical depression and, and uh, hurricanes, uh, anything you want to update the city with when it comes to things that we I could actually experience over the course of the next several weeks? So right now there are two typhoons in the West Pacific that could influence our weather pattern systems by this week and into next week. And there's uh, two tropical storms in the Atlantic, tropical storm Nana, which is heading to the Central America Peninsula, and Tropical Storm Omar, which is off the East Coast, hanging away from the United States. There you go. Kyle, uh, COVID-19 updates. So there are now almost 1,200 new cases in the state of Ohio since 24 hours. 11 new deaths, which is, brings to a total of 4,200 deaths. Okay. United States nationwide, there are now over 6 million cases and approaching 190,000 deaths. Global, there are now approaching 26 billion million cases and almost 900,000 deaths. It's just it's staggering. Uh, to give a real quick update here in Athens, uh, I just received this from the health department. We have three, as of today, three new active cases bringing our active caseload up to 26 um, with uh, 371 recovered and 399 total and two deaths here in Athens County. So that's countywide. Uh, so thank you, Kyle. Thanks for the updates as usual. Um, and I always appreciate having you on the show. You're welcome. So, um, I'm doing things a little bit differently today, uh, largely because uh, my my office computer camera is not working. So I'm coming to you live via my cell phone in my office. A uh, couple things to give in terms of updates uh, updates in the city: the uh, 2020 street improvement schedule. You know, the city of Athens Engineering and Public Works will continue with the 2020 street repaving or improvements which includes everything from milling and repaving to crack seal uh, where they find it appropriate to just put the tar down and, and seal up the cracks. Following streets will be included in the 
annual repaving, Applegate Drive, Lamar Drive, Longview Heights Road, Mulligan Road, Playground Drive, which is over near Cantner Hall and the Patton College of Education, uh, Pomeroy Road, Richland Avenue, uh, South Schaefer. There'll be some milling and paving. That is going to start on September 14th. Um, there will also be, um, let's see, so the South Schaefer is going to be south of West State Street, uh, Lamar Drive, south of Canterbury and Mulligan, and then Curtis Street to Longview Heights. Uh, and then that would be for, or Applegate would be Roxbury Drive to Carroll Road. So again, a lot of repaving that's going to be going on. The roundabout has already been accomplished at 682 and Richland Avenue. The uh, Athens Fire Department is going to continue its flushing of the hydrants September 1st through the 3rd from 8 to 4 p.m. And that will be taking place Columbus Road, Sunset, 3rd Avenue, um, 2nd Avenue, Courier, Raymond, Granville, Mary, Curran, Central, Clark, West Union, uh, Richland Avenue, Hospital Drive. So those you'll, you're likely to see some water flowing in those areas as they open up the hydrants and flush the system and to close it once again. Uh, HAPCAP has announced its emergency grant relief program, a uh, relief grant program for the citizen of Athens. This is for mortgage and or rent relief in the city, uh, up to $1,000 or mo one month's rent um, or mortgage, whichever is less. Uh, we encourage people to reach out to HAPCAP at one 866 992-8858. Uh, or you can email Jeremy Boggs, B-O-G-G-S, at hapcap.org. Again, that's jeremy.boggs at hapcap, H-A-P-C-A-P, dot org. Uh, or you can pick up an application in Nelsonville at the uh, housing office at 50 St. Charles Street in Nelsonville, Ohio. Um, so, Please take advantage of that. I know that several people already have. Um, and uh, again, you can email Jeremy Boggs or you can call or you can go to the Nelsonville office. Arts, Parks and Recreation starting this week, um, Fridays in September. They will be uh, become that Fridays will become bring a friend Fridays to the community center. Uh, if you're a member, you'll be able to bring a friend free each Friday. Um, so take advantage of that. The uh, Athens City Sustainability Commission is going to be meeting, meeting this evening from 6 to 7 p.m. here in the city building, the front conference room at 8 East Washington Street. Again, that's 6 to 7 p.m. for the Sustainability Commission. The City Planning Commission, we will be meeting tomorrow at noon, from noon to 1.30, uh, depending on how many cases or communications that we have. That uh, uh, is also open to the building. It'll be in the uh, front conference room. Uh, as a, uh, No, it will be in council chambers, sorry. And then the Joint Place Advisory Council, they will be meeting tomorrow from 5 to 6 p.m. That will be in the front conference room here in the city building. Again, the Joint Place Advisory Council, 5 to 6 p.m. Um, I've got a proclamation that I want to read today. Uh, and this is to recognize National Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Office of the Mayor, proclamation. Whereas prostate cancer is the most commonly diagnosed diagnosed form of cancer in men and the second leading cause of cancer-related deaths among men. And whereas this year, approximately 191,930 men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in the United States and roughly 33,330 
men will die this year from the disease, which is one man in every, every 16 minutes here in the United States. Whereas one in nine men will get prostate cancer sometime in his lifetime. African-Americans, men are at a highest risk for the disease at a rate of one in six men. African-American men are 2.2 times likely, more likely to die of the disease. And whereas veterans are 1.5 times more likely to get prostate cancer. And whereas education regarding prostate cancer and early detection strategies is critical to saving the lives and preserving and protecting our families. And whereas all men are at risk of prostate cancer, and we encourage the citizens of Athens to be aware of the importance of prostate screenings. Now, therefore, I, Steve Patterson, mayor of the city of Athens, Ohio, do hereby proclaim September 2020 as National Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Um, and so there you have it. Um, prostate Cancer Awareness Month started this week. That's all for today. Um, thank you for tuning in, and please join me next week for...